In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to make an instructional video by using the Capture option found in PowerDirector version 15. In order to begin this process, I'm going to capture a file. I get to the Capture uh, function by clicking to the left of the Edit button on the upper left corner of my screen, and that will open up a brand new screen for me called Capture. Once I'm in the capture mode, it gives me an option of, of seeing the items I could potentially use to capture data from. If I hover over any of them, it will show me exactly what that device is, but it will only give me the active devices I have hooked up and fully functioning and understood in my system by PowerDirector. Right now I have a microphone, an external optical device, and my screen. So we're going to capture right now from my screen. I'll click on that button, and I have yet another window pop up. There are two parts to the window. The first is my recorder controls. The second is the record area. And I can take the left button of the mouse and drag the record area anywhere I want to. There are also some things I need to understand about these controls. I have to decide what aspect ratio I want the recording to be. I can choose between 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Watch what happens when I change to 4 by 3. When I click over here, I have several options of standard sizes. 640 by 480, 960 by 720, 1440 by 1080. If I click on this one here the size and shape of the window will change. If I click on 16 by 9 and click the same drop down over here, I have different ratios that I can select. Uh, so I'll click the standard 720 by 480. Again, I need to reposition the window, but the size has changed. The, I have two other options. I can record the entire screen if I click on the left of these three large buttons or I can record something that says lock to app. That will tend to try to identify the size of the window on the screen in which the application is running, and it will customize that. And then, of course, you can say, I don't want a standard size, and you can take your mouse and adjust this accordingly. And if you notice, the numbers will change here as I uh, control the recording and make it any size or shape I want to, but it's usually best to pick a standard recording size. We'll go back to this one here, which means I have to relocate it again. So let's record in that size right now. We're using 16 by 9 with a 720 by 480. Then I need, want to click on Settings. When I click on Settings, I have some important things I need to consider. Number one is, what do I want the file name to be that I record the data to? Uh, you can pick anything you want. I chose test one. Let me just say Excel example. We'll try that for now. Now I can record in one of two formats. I can record as an MP4 file or a WMV file. Yeah whichever you want. You can also override the resolution here, which we have, and then the number of frames per second. Uh, standard is either 30 or 24, and PowerDirector gives you 30, 25, or 15. You also here in this screen can decide where you want to save your file, and if you don't like uh, the last place you saved it to or the default, you click on the button with the three dots, and it puts you in your file menu, and you can change to any place you want to in your hard drive system. You can decide to import it into PowerDirector or not. You also have two other options that are important. Uh, VoiceOver is default to off, and System Audio is to on. This would be good if you're recording, say, um, uh, something off the internet, where you want the audio on because it's coming through your system, and you don't want your external mic on. Now for the kind of recording we're going to do right now, an instructional video, I need to reverse these. I want my voiceover on so my mic is hot, and I don't need the system sounds. 
So it, when, once this is on, the setup button is active, and now it will determine which, which audio input I have and what the volume is, and you can see it's hot and it's working. I'll click on OK. And then you can control the, your start and stop keys. The default is F9 to start and stop the recording, and F10 to pause or resume. I'm going to change it for the sake of this recording and make my stop and start F12. You also have a button on the lower left called Advanced. I'll click on that for a moment. And we see that we can determine which monitor it's going to try to record on. If you have a multi-monitor setup, whether you want to empower the hardware video encoder, encoder, and if you want to create an MRK file, I'll just turn that one off. I don't need that. Click on OK. So now I have my settings. I know what I'm going to do for file name, location, frame per second, resolution, microphone control, my hotkey here, and I'll click on OK. And now I have my screen recorder. I have my area defined, but if I go ahead and record right now, I'll record nothing but black. So what I'm going to do is drag over a copy of Excel, and we'll do a very short, a few second lesson here. I'll drag that into the recording area, and then I can either press the record button or press what I define to be an F12 button. We'll hit the record for now. And now I have a countdown, and we're ready to go. Here we're showing you how to do something very simple in Excel. I have my quantity of widgets. Let's say we have uh, six widgets, and the cost of the widget is uh, uh, $7.50 each. And then I want to calculate the total value of the widgets in stock. So I move to cell B3. I hit plus. I click on the widget quantity. I hit a multiply, which is my asterisk key. And then I click on the widget cost, which is cell B2. Press enter. And Excel calculates that I have $45 in widgets. And then I press the F12 key to stop the recording. In this case, it tells me my capture has been complete. I need to go to the edit mode and drag and drop the clips into the media library. I'll click on OK. I'll go back to the edit mode. And now I have my Excel example here. I'll drag and drop like I was told to do. Close this other screen. And now I have my recorded area here in my window. I can preview it. And it's working. I can take it and drag it and drop it into my project, into my video track. I can overlay it with uh, titles and text and do anything else I choose to do. And uh, so I'm up and running uh, in, my, in my tutorial training here using the capture feature in PowerDirector.